We all know by now this is William Tyndale, and this is being burned at the stake for trying to give you a Bible in your own language, printed Bible in your own language. And thank God we've got a Bible in our own language. speech, night and night college, there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. And then 1 Timothy 6.20, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, false is so called. So, we're looking for the true science. So we're going to talk about systems of unbelief and belief. Now again, uh, these videos will be available on burningbrightministries.com and uh, hopefully on Beetle. I can figure, right now we're broadcasting live on Beetle, but they'll be on like Vimeo and uh, YouTube eventually. So, uh, but Burning Bright Ministries is a good place to go, and you can see. Um, where we talk about the Bible, where I talk about the uh, Bible issue, and also talk about right the abiding word of truth, and then the uh, videos as well, the materials. So this is what we're talking about, systems of unbelief and belief. If you have systems of unbelief, your science is not going to go very far. But if you have systems of belief, which is based on Christianity, uh, you're going to go pretty far. Christianity, Judeo-Christian civilization, you're, you're going to go pretty far. So, three systems of unbelief. What's the fruit of unbelief? You're going to find out it's despair. Bertrand Russell says it's despair. The three systems of unbelief are polytheism, pantheism, and rationalism. Say it again. Polytheism, pantheism, and rationalism. Good class. Amen. I, I think I'm going to let you have cake more often. Yeah. John, you made the cake? Is that right? Man. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Good job. Sure. Okay. What you, what you gain from believing the gospel with respect to science, the truth presented in the gospel that help you be a better scientist, and the three principles of gaining knowledge. And remember, knowledge, uh, if you go to the Latin word, scien, scientia, you know, that's where we get the word science from. All right. Systems on belief. Polytheism. If you go over to India, you're going to see thousands of gods. Thousands yeah. of gods. And a lot of religions, brand X religions around the world, have a bunch of gods. Amen? What's polytheism? They worship the forces of nature, gods, idols, spirits, souls of the dead. Multiple deities assembled into a pantheon of gods. That's what the Greeks and the Romans had. All right? Come from if your educational system is based on the Aristotle or the Socrates system, those guys believe not in a uh, God of the Bible. They believe in multiple gods, and, and it's all mythology. Mm -hmm. Nobody yeah. takes those gods serious today. It's it started with a false system of sacrifices. Started with Cain, and later Ham. You know, after the flood, you got the Tower of Babel, etc. In Romans 1, 21 to 23, and Ezekiel 8, 10, I've got that verse up here. It should be on the next slide. Romans 1, I think that should be 22 to 23. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened, professing themselves to be what? Wise. Boy, don't they look down on us? Yeah. Those intellectuals, don't they look... Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. 
and change the glory of God into the image uh, made like to corruptible man. That would be like Mary, worship. Into birds, you'll see that in a little bit. And four-footed beasts, like calves, bulls, right? Golden calf. And creeping things, snakes. You see a lot of you see a, a lot of the Hindu, this Hindu god or whatever. The lady has a snake around her. You'll see with Isis in a little bit. You'll see her with a snake on. Paul is writing that in the first century. Paul hasn't come. Paul didn't come up against you know. We think everything we got is new. No, two thousand years ago, Paul was fighting the same morons. Right. Yeah. Right. I shouldn't say that. Should I, brother? That sounded harsh. Being too kind. There you go. You say, oh, that, we don't do that kind of thing today. We're modern. We're scientific. Yeah, we're right. We're right up there, man. We got cell phones and we got uh, telecommunications. We can yeah. fly to the moon, go to Mars. Take a spaceship and fly it out past Pluto. And what are these people doing? This is like an elephant god or something. These people are serious. Yeah. 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 All right. These people are serious. This is a this is a dirty rotten shame here. God gave them a book. Yeah. God gave them a revelation. You can you can't tell me that there's not uh, preachers in amongst this uh, people in India that aren't telling them the truth about the, the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And they rejected it for an elephant look elephant god. This is Horus. This is Horus. This is a bird. This is a bird. You see that eagle eye? That's on your dollar bill on the top of a pyramid. This is what they used to worship in Egypt. This is what they used to worship in Egypt. In fact, some people still do, I guess. But you ever see that pyramid? What's a pyramid doing on your dollar bill? What's an all-seeing eye doing on the top of your pyramid? On top of that pyramid? What's Roman numerals doing? Roman, Roman, like Roman Catholic. What are those doing on the bottom? Mm -hmm. And on that dollar bill, it talks about a new world order, and he will approve. Yeah. 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 It comes all the way back to Egypt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all the way to Egypt. That's what they were. That's what they were worshiping. That came from Mystery Bad One. It came from Nimrod and Simaris and her illegitimate baby. Yeah. This is the element. This is this is all a myth. Mm -hmm. This is this guy never existed. This is a myth. But they worship him. Here's uh, I know she's got horns on her head. She got a sun or a moon symbol, but this is a sun. And she's feeding the baby on her lap. What's that a counterfeit of? You see it in all the Roman Catholic paintings, right? Mary and the baby. Mary feeding Jesus. That's a counterfeit. The Roman Catholics picked that up from Egypt. People say people wouldn't work. People wouldn't. In the 21st century, of all the modern science and cable television, all they wouldn't fool with that kind of stuff, would they? Yeah, they yeah, do every yeah. day. United States of America, they do. Remember, they worship the bull, golden calf. See that symbol there? There's the sun again. Here's the horns. Right. In uh, India, what are they not allowed to eat? Cows. That's a god. So, yeah. <laughs> did you say? Did you say? Oh, <laughs> did you hear that back there? Chuck said, "Holy cow!" That's where we get it from. It's yeah. from the Bible. You ever hear a holy mackerel? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's yeah. Dagon. Yeah. Yeah. The fish god. You ever see a pope yeah. turn sideways? Yeah. There He's he got is. a fish head on. All right. 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 You say, "Oh." People wouldn't be so stupid to believe that. They believe the Bible, the God of the Bible, the Lord Jesus Christ, and they believe the true revelation, right? Yeah. No. Six and a half billion people on this planet don't have a clue. Yeah. Amen. It's not that we're not trying. Yeah. Amen. It's not that we haven't tried for the last 2,000 years. Yeah. How about this one? Oh, my oh. word. That's a bull. <laughs> What's he got in his head? Yeah. He's got a sun symbol. There's a sun symbol. Can you imagine? That? <laughs> That's important. And they do that. They'll, they'll march through the streets with that thing. I've been. To, I've been in Mexico, 
and they have a special they had a special parade. We were having a we were having a service outside an outdoor meeting at night. We we're having a movie and all this stuff. And then I, and we were just got we were done. And then here comes the Roman Catholics up the street. That's pagan worship. That's pagan. That's a sun symbol. They're, he's worshiping the sun. What about this? Anybody know what this is? This is the Kaaba. About a billion people, a billion um, Muslims, uh, have, you know, in the world, and they all worship this place, the Kaaba. They have to make a, uh, what do you call it, a pilgrimage here, a black box. Wonderful. You know what's in the black box? A meteor. A meteor, this, a meteor folks. You say, I can't believe that. Well, in the book of Acts, yeah. Yeah. people are worshiping the image that came down from Jupiter. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Century, right? We, we have the modern age and cell phones and Maseratis and, and, uh, and oil, you know, oil coming out of uh, the ground that makes us billions of dollars. No way we would worship a rock. Yeah. They worship a rock. That's what the Bible tells you not to do. Romans yeah. chapter 1. Paul ran into it in the first century. Hello, 2,000 years later, we haven't gotten very far, have we? It's a system of unbelief. That's why these these countries that have this as a major, they don't go very far. It's not until you broke off the yokes of Roman Catholicism, broke off, break off the yokes of this uh, Muslim, break off the yokes of Hindu and everything, and, and start living like a normal Westerner, which you got from the Judea Christian yep. is that when your science can advance. Yep. Yeah. Otherwise, if you lived under this, you'd be in yep. the 18, 800s. Yeah. Right. Yep. Right. You'd be actually, you know, um, Muhammad came around in the 600 AD, right. but he put them, he put those people back to like 400 BC. Yeah. The way they live. Yeah. This guy is kissing the stone. He's kissing that rock. Modern. You're contemporary. Okay? That is that is what? Polytheism. Here's pantheism. The worship nation. We, we laugh and call them tree huggers. But you read their literature, you go on the web and you, you study pantheism and you, they worship... Gia, which is the nature. Yeah. God is in nature. Well, we understand God's in nature. I mean, yeah. Apostle Paul said so when he was preaching. But he made nature. He's right. yep. in it, but he's not of it. Right. right. That tree makes great toothpicks. Right. Amen. 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 All things according to that Bible was put under dominion. Under, under the, all the things that God made with his fingers, he gave it up for us, right. our dominion. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, pantheism. Man identifies himself with the universe. God and the universe are one and the same. Arthur C. Clarke, pantheist. Uh, Einstein, pantheist. He did not believe in a personal God. There's no personal God there. You don't pray, you can't, who do you pray to? Who comes to your aid? Who's your comforter? Holy Spirit's our comforter. Who's your savior? Lord Jesus. Right. Yeah, not them. They don't have a savior. That's right. And that's, and what about the New Agers? It's kind of right in there. Right. Yeah, that's good, sister. Yep, yeah, that's right. <clears throat> you see that picture? Yeah. Chris, well, you look at this picture. <laughs> Can you see it? It's kind of hard to see. Yeah. It's a big tree falling on a house if you yeah. can't see it. <clears throat> what can you see? <laughs> This is a pantheon. You know, tree hugger, right? Look what that tree did to your house. Yeah. You get the joke? Yeah. <laughs> I thought you guys would look. Yeah. Saren. You see, that's supposed to be funny. Supposed to be... There you go. Formalized as a religion in India around 1000 BC. Okay. I thought you'd appreciate that. You know, that's from the tree huggers. You know, they love these trees so much. And then I guess it put them all right. Pantheism. Here it is. Now, Dr. Hill says that the ultimate of the human soul, this is what they, they believe, this is one of the things of the Hindu, whatever, was absorption into the world soul, which the call, which they call the self-existent Brahman, this Brahman, they regard as the only reality, the material world, 
that can be seen and touched was only an appearance. It was Maya Illusion. Well, anyway, that's New Age. Yeah. Yeah, the bubble one. When Christianity started waning in the United States of America, then we got all these Far Eastern religions. Yeah. We used to go over there and try to get them out of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And now they're coming over here and they're wearing, you know, they're, they're sitting cross-legged wearing the long dresses and the mm -hmm. funny hats. You know, and that's supposed to be religious. Right? You know, you see them, you see them. That is not religious. I mean, it is religious, but it ain't right. That ain't going to get you any closer to God. No. <clears throat> Man is the measure of all things. Protagonist, 490 to 420. The Greeks were pantheist in the sense uh, that they were dualists. Plato and Astro were dualists. Mind and matter exist side by side for all eternity. Everything's the same like forever. There's no beginning, no end. You see how that, see, when you start believing those philosophies and you get away from the Bible, you can see how this naturalistic science starts creeping up because you're starting to think, well, the gods and everything and everything's been the same forever. And blah, blah. That's a religion. That's religion. Learn about the world through thought and intuition. Right here. Bing, 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 ding, ding, ding. That is what put the Roman Catholic system into the dark ages with their science. Learn about the world through thought and intuition, not by empirical evidence. Like Bacon said, you need to make experiments, see if they can be reproduced. You look at the physical world and you examine it, not Aristotle, thought and intuition. It's very interesting that Einstein did a lot of thought and intuition. He was a pantheist. Yeah. He gave us E equals MC squared, which um, it, was, it was a thought. It was a thought thing with him. No beginning, no ending, eternity of matter. That's uniform. Uniformitarianism. Yeah. Probably she called the big U. <laughs> right? These guys lived 300 years BC. That's 100 years after the Old Testament was finished. Yep. They had Genesis 1 sitting on the table. Yeah. The Greeks decided to reject it. Plato, Aristotle, and Socrates. You don't want to study too much about Greek. Uh, Greek society because it'll make you puke. Right. Greek philosophy was basically pan. So, they're the ones that gave you the man is the measure of all things. You see that pop up again in the 1700s in the rationalist movement. Mm -hmm. well, man is the measure of all What you think, what man thinks, not what God says, right. but what man thinks is what is right. Is what We need to think, of, think these things through. We shouldn't rely on a book. Mm. Okay. Well, how did the Greek society turn out? Yeah, all right. Uh, if you want to, you can see the ruins. You can take a boat trip and see all the ruins. They did pretty well, didn't they? For themselves. Romans too. You want to see how the Roman Empire did under under these guys? Uh, just ask the, the Mongols and the Visigoths and everybody came in and sacked Rome. Yeah. Great job. Here's Greek philosophy, according to Ian Scott. Ian Scott he says, he, he quotes, any, this is what he says, any proposition, any system of beliefs, any ideas must be subjected to reason. Human reason being the judge in all things. You see that pop up again in German yeah. rationalism. Yeah. Right? Now this is also a joke. You see the statue here? You notice what it's missing? No head. Yeah. No head. <laughs> no, I just that was for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Take that up. You got it. <laughs> now <laughs> rationalism. Ed, are you getting this on video? That's Uncle Chimp, yeah. <laughs> Hey, they make fun of us, we can have a great time. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that's right. Originated in the Middle Ages amongst the scholars. Bing, bing, always higher learning. Boom, boom, boom. They were the guys that gave you West Bend Heart, higher yeah. rash, you know, that's what gave you all the whacked out Bibles for the last 100 years, 150, yeah, almost 100, 120, 130 years now. They attempted, now here's the problem, they attempted to combine Aristotle with Christianity. If you followed my history of the of the uh, 
corruption of the uh, of the Bible, history of Scripture corruption, you find that uh, Justin Martyr tried to mix paganism with Christianity. Here it shows up again in the Middle Ages. Because you don't want to be thought of as a dumb thump. And you just believe the book. Because all these other guys are so much smarter than you. They've been studying, they've been reading, you know. Maybe, oh, yeah. maybe they read 200 books of Isaac Asimov, you know, and they're so much smarter. You know, and Isaac Asimov says, uh, the Bible ain't right. Well, maybe, you know, maybe I could maybe I figure a way to compromise and put those two together. Uh, mm -hmm. Christianity and Aristotle do not mix. They are oil and water, but they try to put it together. Yeah. That's where it's starting. You can know the truth independently of God. <laughs> no, you can't. Amen. Right. Amen. God reveals himself in preaching. God reveals himself in nature. That's right. God reveals himself in his book. That's right. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to go into a large. We're going to get into these guys tomorrow a little bit more in depth. Yeah, but you start with Descartes, Simon, Astrock, Icorn. One follows the other. You start with Descartes. You're starting to question. He's starting to critique the Bible. He was Richard Simon was a Bible critique critic. So was John Astrock. So was Icornhorn. They get to Hume. He starts being wrapped. Now you get rid of the Bible, and people start thinking about. Well, if we don't have a Bible, then I'm going to have to think for myself. So you get Hume, then you get Kant, and Huxley. Huxley's called the, the uh, bulldog for Charles Darwin. Uh -huh. He's the one that pushes Charles Darwin yeah. and his theory of rich origin of the species. Rationalism. Get rid of God. How does this thing? All. Get rid of the Bible and human thought. That's rationalism. What's the fruit of that? Nope. Only on the firm foundation of unyielding despair. Unyielding despair. Can the soul's habitation be safely built? That's Bertrand Russell. Rationalist. That's the fruit of unbelief. Unyielding despair. You want to... You want to you want to see unyielding despair? Just walk down uh, any any city street. Yeah. Yeah. Don't have the book. Don't have a savior. Don't have any comfort. Don't have any hope. Right. right. Amen. Ours is not, and it's it's not that they couldn't get it. No. There it is in a book. Mm -hmm. A super supernatural book. Amen. Right. And we proved it over and over again. So, Dr. Dr. Hill says, what's the result? You know, so he saw the result of being a rational man. What's the result of being a gospel man? The result of the gospel, man can know, one, the creator. He can know the purpose of the creation. Yeah. Right? Who's the creator? God. God. What? Jesus Christ. Three and one, one is three. And the one in the middle died for me. Amen. Amen. The purpose of the creation is for his pleasure. The order of things, past, present, and future. We know the past and the beginning. God created heaven and the earth. Then he had the creation. And, and uh, we know that uh, under Noah, the world was, was drowned in a flood. We know the past, right? We know that human history lasted about 4,000 years before Christ. And Jesus Christ came, buried, was rose again. 2,000 years of... of uh, uh, Christianity is going to be a tribulation, and there's going to be a thousand year millennium. Amen. And then the earth, then we're going to, the earth's going to be, uh, well, they're going to have the great white throne judgment, and then the earth's going to be regenerated, if you want to call it, or re just going to be burned. Amen. And then we're going to get a new heaven, new earth. Roll the warm. I don't want to put words in the Bible's mouth. <laughs> but, you know, and it, the Bible says that the world is just, you know, like a garment, he's going to roll it up. Yeah. The whole universe. We're going to get to watch that. Yeah. Yeah. We know how we were made. Uh, we know our nature. We know we were born with a fallen nature. We now have a new nature, but yeah. we're still fighting the old nature. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 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 And John has to bring this awesome red velvet. Cake. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And I, I did good. I saved mine till after. Because <laughs> if I'm up here, see, I see you guys now, you're starting to fade. <laughs> you were great for about. Oh, two, 
Ten minutes. And now it's starting to fade. If anybody needs to stand up, go ahead. There's no problem with that. Uh, we know about our atonement. We understand we're sinners, but we understand that Jesus Christ is our atonement, and he's also our redemption. Mm -hmm. We have no problems with you. How about, how about a pantheist? No way. No. How about a polytheist? No. Worship an uh, elephant god. Please. Worship a bull. But see, behind those idols is a devil. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The Bible talks yeah. about the sacrifice to devils. Right. Yeah. So that's why and it does have power. But it's yeah. the wrong power. Yeah. Yeah. Number. Okay. So those those are what you know if you're if you're Christian. And there's three truths that are evident from the gospel. God is a self-existent creator, so you don't have to go look for him. He's been there, done that, got the T-shirt, and you're not going to figure him out anytime soon. Yeah. Right. We got plenty of revelation. We got enough on our plate just with that Bible. Just figure that out. We got enough problems of our own we have to worry about. He's been forever. We'll, we will know one day. Mankind was created in the image of God. And the material universe was created out of nothing. We know that from the gospel. From what we, from what we know with the Bible. And here's three principles of gaining knowledge because of the gospel. God reveals himself in nature and scriptures. already talked about that. He also will reveal himself to your heart through preaching. But yeah. as far as God, if you want to look at nature, he reveals himself. That's called a designer and a maker. They call it intelligent design. Now, we've yeah. coined a phrase for it. But you can find God because you have to see a, a, a designer and a maker. Okay, the regenerative work of the Holy Spirit enables a believer to receive divine revelation. Yeah. We know things yeah. because we can see things. Yeah. That the, they can't see. They say the eye of faith. Our faith is not a blind faith. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's based on a book. Yeah, right? Amen. And that book, statistically, the things in this book, as far as prophetic, prophecy and types and things of Jesus Christ in the old time, and how the book was put together, and then page numbers yeah. and all that, it's a supernatural book. So, yeah. our, faith, so yeah. our faith is not blind faith, because we have a book. Yeah. And that book has proved itself over and over again. Plus we have the Holy Spirit. That still small voice, voice that talks to us. And every oh, once in a yeah. while, the Lord will throw us a bone. Yeah. yeah. Well, let him, let us know. Hey, I forgot about you. You know, I am busy running an entire universe, but uh, you know, I am watching over you. What is what is the Bible say? I will never leave thee nor, nor forsake thee. thee. It's absolutely true. We know that's true. So don't let a blind man tell you that that you can't see. Yeah. Remember I said that last night. Don't let a blind man tell you you can't see. I see a lot. Every time I read scriptures, there's something in there that's interesting in there. That's revelation. Faith allows believers to make Christ and his word the starting point of all thinking. And you can't go wrong there. So, we talked about the three systems on belief. They are uh, polytheism, pantheism, the fruit of unbelief is despair. What you what you gain from the uh, the gospel, you understand that there's a creator. There's a purpose in the creation. There's an order of things. You know, begin to end. You know how you were made. You know your nature. You got dual nature now. And you know you know that you're redeemed. You're on your way to heaven. Yeah. There's a total redemption. Then the three principles of gaining knowledge. God is self-existent. We know God is there. And he was the one that created everything. We know he's created the image of God, so we don't have to worry about monkeys and all this other stuff. Yeah. You were creating God's image. You were creating God's image. Amen. Period. Dot. And then the material universe was created out of nothing. Uh, the, uh, the physicists are just figuring that out. You know? Before, yeah. they thought everything was... All the same, you know. Yeah, they believe yeah. like the Greeks, right? Everything was beginning to end, pantheism and all that. No, no, no. It had a beginning. That's right. All right, don't go anywhere. You're not allowed to go anywhere. We're gonna not take a break. We're gonna close this. We're gonna start the next one. We're not gonna finish it, but we're we're gonna start the next one. Right. Okay. We're
we're going to talk, because I, I kind of promised you that I was going to show you some videos of uh, Galileo and stuff. Mm -hmm. We may not get there, but I'm going to give it a shot. Anna says, learn about science and the Bible. It's good. <laughs> so you out there in video land, to learn about science and the Bible, it's good for you. <laughs> she loves glasses. All right. This is another lesson. So science and the Bible, Dr. Carl W. Deans, Burning Break Ministries, Pensacola, Florida. We're going to learn, we're going to talk about the biblical basis for science. Now we're going into that third topic that you already know. Is there a biblical basis for science? Yeah, yes, science. class. Yes, yes. And now I'm going, to, I'm going to go and give you some more meat to the bone. I gave you the skeleton. Now we're going and I'll give you a little bit of meat. And we're not going to stay here too much longer. Don't look at your clocks. I am watching the clocks. And I can see. Chuck, I saw you look back there at the clock. I could <laughs> oh, you know, Harry, yeah. I'll watch Harry. I, yeah, actually, if you want to watch him, because I will, you know. Anyway, Bear, I only go another 10 minutes or so. We'll, we'll be fine. That's right. Genesis 1 1 in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. You know that one? Psalms 19 1 to 3, the heavens declare the glory of God. And then, watch out for science falsely so called. That's the theme verses. All right. What are we going to talk about? What are you going to learn on today's view of science? We're going to talk about Christianity. Christianity's benefit to science. That modern science owes its existence to the Bible. Yeah. Are you, if I say it enough time, you're going to get it. <laughs> you hear it, you hear it, you hear it. There are seven perceptions needed for modern science, and they come from Christianity. If you don't have modern science, you don't have... I mean, if you don't have Judeo Christianity, you don't have modern science. Yeah. Reality and value of things is required. If you're a pantheist or you're one of those polytheists, you know, why, you ever not wonder why you know people in, in, in atheistic countries and, and and that would be rationalism and some other uh, branch religions they don't consider life very important. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Life is expendable. Yeah. As our country became more and more pantheistic, notice the rise in certain things like abortion mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then many of the greatest scientists of all time were believers. That's a shock to, to many people, but it's a truth. Most people think science is outside the realm of biblical or religious thought. That God has no place in science. This is, if you went to Index University, they would say, but religious thought, biblical and religious thought, is way outside of science. Well, your, the premise for modern science is religion. You've got to start, your assumptions that you start with, as you, as a person, as you would, the construct of the universe leads you to have proper science. But they, what they say is, oh, God has no place in science. Christianity is not compatible with science. This is what they say. This is what the world says. This is what your, uh, you know, academics say. Most think that Christianity hampers true scientific endeavors. And classic example is Galilee against the Roman Catholic Church. They always use that as an example. <laughs> see, Roman, see, they'd say the Roman Catholic Church, which is de facto what, they, what the world calls the church, was against Galileo. Galileo was a true scientist, and the Roman Catholic Church was against Galileo. So yes. therefore, the church, and uh, by default, the Bible, is against scientists. The Roman Catholic Church is not Christianity. No, right? sure. Right, right. It is not Christianity. It's right. not biblical Christianity, right. for sure. Right. And they don't speak for me. Right. Right. See? But that's the problem. We got the rap because of that. Yep. Because of the, that, what they did, what the Pope did to Galileo uh, and Copernicus and those guys, mm -hmm. and, and weren't the, we got the rap. Mm -hmm. The Roman Catholic system was under the Aristotle, uh, Arist, Aristotle idea of science, which was what? Thought, not empirical, not looking. 
Now, what is the truth? Christianity was a benefit to science, and if they let it, it's, yep. it's amazing, but a lot of the, a lot of the uh, scientists today that are good are, are Christians. Science rose among avow, avowedly, or people that vowed or, or said that they were Christian men, theologians, monks, and professors during the Reformation. So that's the truth. Here's one fellow, Gutenberg. He invented the printing press, which brought us the information age. Gutenberg invented the printing press. You know why he wanted to do that? Not because he wanted to print, uh, you know, Time Magazine, or he wanted to print Newsweek, or he wanted to print, uh, you know, uh, Isaac Asimov's books. You know why he invented the printing press? To print a Bible. Yeah. The most precious thing in the world to him at that time. To the world at that time. And right now, that book that he printed is the most precious thing on this planet Earth. Amen. As far as the books is concerned. He invented the printing press to print the Bible. Right. Let me show you the printing press. Maybe we could turn one light bank down. This is a, the printing press. This is a uh, Mainz. This is in Mainz. Yeah, that's probably pretty good. But this is the Gutenberg printing press from a great press. He invented the movable type. The printing press was there. They had to bring presses, the Chinese. But as far as movable type, where you can make different type and make a new plate every time, Gutenberg was the one that invented that printing type. What? To print the Bible. Here's the signatures. That's signatures from a Gutenberg Bible. It would be a Gutenberg Bible. But anyway, this is this I think is one of the original ones. If not, it's a very good replica. Here's the you ever heard of the um, watch your P's and Q's? Mm -hmm. That was because of that. Because you put in each individual letter in, but it had to be backwards. Mm -hmm. So you had to watch your P's and Q's. Yeah. And they would turn that thing and push the plate down onto the uh, paper. Of course, the, the plate would have uh, ink on it. And uh, that's how they would they did the one page at a time. It's not like your copier where you put the page in and do, 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 do 20. You'd have to do one page at a time. In a little bit, there'll be a fellow that works in the museum, and he will do a uh, he'll show you how how it works. But there it is. Brought in the information age. Without the Gutenberg press, probably wouldn't have been a Reformation. With Martin Luther and the Hummers were able to put their tracks out all yeah, over amen. Europe. And they were able, people were able to read it in their own language, amen. These are, this is paper. Paper was very precious in those days. So he's got to be very careful with the paper. And you'll see how it, how it works. Now this is obviously a smaller press, but same principle. Not in any real hurry because he's got to get the ink to go into the uh, paper. Wow. 
one page at a time. Mainz, Germany, the Gutenberg Museum. It's a Zeitung, it's a newspaper. Eighteen oh eight. Napoleon's time. <clears throat> look at the small print. If you look at the, uh, if you look at a uh, Bible from, uh, okay, brother Ed, if you put that up, put the lights up. Look at a uh, 1613 edition of a Bible of the AB 1611, and look at the at the pages in the back of the appendix. You see all these little, very, very small, small, small print because paper was very precious, so not more print. You know. So anyway, here's another guy. What is the truth? Here's Galileo, 1564 to 1642. Uh, he discovered those four. Planet, or four moons orbiting Jupiter in 1610, right around the time of the AB 1611. One two punch. 1611, Galileo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another inventor. He was a believer in the scriptures. And he says so in his writings. Okay, I've got another movie if you just. And this is on Galileo. This is about the telescope and. And it tells a little bit of background about Galileo. telescopes ever built. They are 300 years old and were made by an Italian man who lived in the 1600s, Galileo Galilei. As a young student, Galileo studied math and physics. The ideas he developed in these areas are some of the most important ever. His ideas on how objects fall on the movement of pendulums influenced how we measure time. But he is best remembered for his work in astronomy, the study of the stars and planets and other objects in space. And Galileo did not invent the telescope. That credit goes to a Dutchman named Hans Lippershey. Lippershey's invention was designed to give ships a closer look of the enemy. Galileo was the first to point the telescope towards the heavens. He first published his findings in a journal called The Star and Messenger. This article is about Galileo's observation of the moon. He 
He stated that the moon was not a smooth sphere, as people thought, but was covered with mountains. And he did not stop there. He went on to look at the largest planet, Jupiter. It was Galileo who realized that there were four large moons orbiting the planet. But these ideas were very radical for the time. Galileo went against the church's belief that the Earth was the center of the universe. He spent the last years of his life in prison as a result of his beliefs. He died in 1642. 350 years later, Pope John Paul finally recognized Galileo's enormous contributions to science and honored Italy's greatest astronomer. Today, his name lives on. Italy's first national telescope is called the Galileo. And NASA's first space probe designed to study the planet Jupiter close up was also made in design. Galileo turned a weapon of war into an instrument of science. And because of him, today's telescopes can see to the farthest reaches of the universe. Now, when it says the church, when it says the church in there, which church are they talking about that went against Galileo? Catholic church. That's not my church. <coughs> no. Okay. That is not my church. Uh, the world looks at it. That's what news media always talks about. The church, the church. That, that's not our church. Galileo got in trouble for two reasons. One, he saw something that the Pope said you couldn't see. Uh, it was that there was moons orbiting Jupiter. Mm -hmm. At the time, the Roman <coughs> Catholic Church said that everything orbits the Earth. And that goes all the way back to Aristotle. The Roman Catholic Church said everything orbits the Earth. Galileo looks out and says, no, not everything, not everything orbits the Earth. I got some moons out there over Jupiter. They said, you don't see that. Right? You don't see that. That's experiment. That's an observation, right? Yeah. The second thing he got in trouble with is when he wrote his letter to the Duchess of Tuscany, or whatever, I think that's her name, and talked about his beliefs. He was going, he went into the scriptures, and he was saying in the scriptures that that's, and he was making notes about the scriptures and talking about how some of the scriptures are in relation to the observer. Because he's, he's seeing that everything doesn't orbit the earth, so how do you explain some of the scriptures that it seems the apparent, it's apparent, it, it looks apparent to you that the things are orbiting the earth. Well, he says they must be from the point of reference of the, of the, of the person. And he gives several examples. The reason, the second reason why he got in trouble is because he was a layman and he was interpreting the scriptures. Yeah. All right. You hear what I'm saying? He said, "Hey, you might be right, but you don't. Have, you're not. You're not in the business of interpreting the scriptures for yourself. We'll interpret it for you." All right. Now we've got. We have to be careful in our own midst, in our own groups. Yeah. You know? Because the Bible says we are priesthood of believers. Yeah. Amen. And we've got we've got guys out there in our our universe yep. that are telling telling the layman, no, you don't see that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or no, you can't interpret the scriptures. We tell you. Right. Who are you to tell us? Yeah. 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 Hey, we're the priesthood of believer. That's what the Reformation is all about. Yeah. But Galileo, now we're going four we're going back four hundred years now. Galileo got in trouble for those two things. Yeah. And with that happy note, Amen, brother. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll pick up this uh, again tomorrow morning. I appreciate the visitors. Okay. BurningBrightMinistries.com. Okay, okay, and I got it. And we'll do the gospel and we'll do the gospel tomorrow. But uh, let me just say this. The Bible says, For by grace are you saved through faith and it not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. All these other brand X religions will not get you to heaven. The only way is by, through Jesus Christ who said, I am the way, the truth, the life. 
No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Period. He died for your sins. He was buried, rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And he can be your savior. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Amen. So I got Amen. it in. Thank you, Ed. It, it needed to be done. It does. We need, it's going out to the world. Amen. We need to, there's a savior that loves them, is concerned for them. That's why we're part, that's, that's part of the reason why we're doing this seminar right Amen. now. Amen. Is to tell you, don't trust in science. Science is unreliable. I just showed you several examples. But uh, you can trust in God. Amen. He's very reliable. Amen. <laughs> he don't move. Yeah. Change is not. Right, Pastor Struble, if you wouldn't mind closing us in a word of prayer. Amen. Just quickly, also, I, I did not bring the, the rep other handouts tonight. So I want to have more handouts available for you tomorrow morning. Um, and you folks, uh, I already talked to, to Chris and then I'm going to make him up some copies. But there's about seven or eight packets like we got last night too. So tomorrow morning I'll have at least two or three more and then we'll give you the rest Sunday night. So again, take them home and keep them for yourself. That's for your own study. And it goes into even more depth that he's going through in these, these sessions as well. So make sure we'll go over that again tomorrow morning. Uh, so make sure you get all of them and we'll make sure you have that tomorrow morning. All right, let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much again for this night, Lord. And thank you, God, for you know, what we've been taught to tonight, Lord. And thank you that we have a book, Lord, that we hold in our hands that is a science book, Lord. And we can look to it, Lord. And we can know uh, things, Lord, about the universe and about yeah, science, yeah. Lord. And thank you for men like, like Galileo, Lord, that took yeah. a stand, Lord, that looked at things. And, uh, yeah. Lord, I thank you for men like him that you've set forth through time, Lord. And I thank you for their findings, Lord. And, how they just prove, Lord, that the Bible is true, Lord, and I thank you for that. Just pray, Lord, you bless our time tomorrow, Lord. I pray we have a good time. I pray the folks would come out, Lord, and I pray that we would once again be encouraged, Lord, uh, in the book that we hold in your hands. Lord, thank you for Bud Deems. Thank you for all the work that he's put into this. Lord, I pray you bless him for that. Lord, you ask us now to dismiss us with uh, your blessing, Lord. Get us home safely and get us to our prospective churches tomorrow morning, Lord. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Amen.